Now there are a lot of things to admire about South Korea. It's come a long way in the last 50-60 years, in particular since the 1950s. It's got some amazing brands like LG, Samsung, Kia, Hyundai. And also, I do admire the work ethic of South Korean people. However, today I'm going to give you 10 reasons why I think you should stay out of the South Korean real estate market. Now, the first reason, and I think this is the main reason, is the extremely low birth rate. Now, I was quite shocked when I looked this up, but the birth rate in South Korea as of 2020 is 0.84 per couple. I'll repeat that, 0.84 per couple. Now, that is amazingly low. And when we talk about problems with birth rates in, let's say, Japan, at least it's 1.42 there. In the US, it's 1.73. And in many European countries where the birth rate is considered low, it's still above one at 1.2, 1.3, but here it's 0.84. And in Seoul, the capital, it's actually only 0.64. And the population actually in South Korea in 2020 fell for the first time. It actually fell by 20,000. But listen to this, and these are government figures. The government predicts that if current trends continue, the population of South Korea will drop from the current 51.8 million to 39 million by 2067, with 46% of the population over the age of 64. Now, that is not what you want if you're considering investing in real estate. Number two, we still can't ignore the geopolitical tensions with North Korea. Technically, actually, uh, North Korea and South Korea are still at war. And again, this is a risk to the property market. Number three, um, now, South Korea is very, very, very heavily reliant on exports, but it's finding it a little bit more difficult because there's heavy competition from the likes of India and China in the region. And Hyundai has actually switched some of its production and suppliers to India and Mexico to bring down costs. This is going to be a problem going forward, I think, for South Korea. Number four, I want to talk about the economic slowdown. Now, uh, South Korea did experience a, a massive boom over the last 30, 40 years. But if we take the period of 2015 to 2019, compared with uh, any other five years um, from 1990, the growth has been pretty slow. It's not bad by Western European standards, but it's, it has slowed down. And youth unemployment is actually near 10% at the moment. And if we look at the last 10 years, it's never actually been below 6%. Now, for such a powerhouse... That's bad. That is not a good sign. Number five, I want to talk about the increasing government debt to GDP. Now, back in the mid-90s, it was only 8%. But as of 2020, it had reached 42%. Now, I'm not saying 42% is bad. It's actually quite good. But it's the trend that I'm worried about. And if you look at predictions for the future, this is only expected to increase. Number six, and this is probably almost as important as number one, the low birth rate, is South Korea is in the midst of a property bubble. So at the moment, it is amazingly expensive, and it's actually quite a politically sensitive issue in South Korea. It's so expensive for the average family to buy a property. It takes an average Korean actually uh, household more than 14 years to buy an average home in Seoul. And that's a statistic of about several months ago. That I think has actually probably only increased further. And if we look at actually prices in Seoul in particular, in the city centre, the average is more than 19,000 US dollars per square metre. That's a heck of a lot when you consider the average salary is less than 3,000 US dollars a month net in, in Seoul. Now, there are some other places in South Korea that where the prices are a little bit more reasonable. So if we take Busan, it's about 5,300 US dollars per square meter. And although the salaries, yes, they are a fair bit le um, lower than Seoul, um, in proportion, it's better. It's a better bet. And Daegu as well, where the average property prices are in the city center are 5,400 US dollars per square meter. But again, the average salary is a lot lower than Seoul at about 2,000 to 2,100 US dollars per month net. 
Uh, I would actually have also avoid Jeju Island because the prices there are quite expensive. So we're looking there at 7,600 US dollars per square meter. Although the salaries are higher than um, Busan and Daegu. Another place you could consider is Ich Icheon. The actual price per square meter in the city center is 6,600 US dollars. But again, the average salary is not very high at 2,200 US dollars per month. And what I'd also consider here is actually the population density. So in Seoul, it's 16,000 uh, people per square meter, whereas, for example, in Busan, it's only 4,400. Uh, people per square meter and Je in Jeju it's 356 so I would absolutely avoid investing in Seoul and Jeju if you if you really do want to take the plunge I would um, choose maybe Ichion, Busan or Daegu but I'd stay out of this market altogether because coming to point seven the rental yields in South Korea are not great either so according to Numbeo the rental yields in um, uh, Seoul are less than 2% and even in other major cities the rental yields are below 4% gross this is not great uh, point number eight if you want a mortgage again as a foreigner it's going to be difficult to get a mortgage if you're a non-resident in South Korea you'll probably have to get it from your own country again this is another difficult step to buying uh, number nine, I want to talk about rental income tax and capital gains tax, which range from 6% to 42%. Now, I'm not saying this is bad. It actually isn't bad. So I'll, I'll put this in US dollar terms, approximate figures. So if we up to about 10,600 US dollars, you'll only pay 6% rental income tax and capital gains tax. Um, in between the brackets of $10,600 and $40,600, uh, it would be 15%. And it, 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 it's on a step basis. So if you're getting above $441,000 US dollars rental income, which I doubt will happen, you will pay 42%. Now, this, this is not too bad, but it's actually things are starting to go in the uh, wrong direction. I can only see this going up. And um, the government has brought in a number of, of measures to combat the housing crisis because um, this is as I was saying earlier is a big political issue in South Korea so to call the market what have they done okay so from the 1st of June 2021 um, capital if if you sell your property within one year you'll pay 77% capital gains tax so definitely now you cannot flip a property in South Korea anymore. Um, the capital gains tax will absolutely murder you. But there are certain um, designated areas, in particular in Seoul, um, which are considered places where people like to put their money. Um, so we'll call them, we'll just call them hotspots, where if you're a multi-owner of other properties, the government will not allow you to get a mortgage to buy in these areas. And they've put other restrictions on multi-home owners as well. And also property taxes for multi-home owners are, have gone up. So uh, this is already a raft of measures that the government is doing. And it hasn't actually cooled down the property market. But eventually, this is their aim. They want to cool down the property market. They want prices to go down in South Korea. So if you're investing now, it isn't a good idea because... If the government wants that trend of property prices going down and you go in now, you're not going to make a profit. And finally, number 10, uh, look, a lot of people, when they buy property, they they like to have residency as well. This is not going to be the case in South Korea. So you cannot get automatic residency by simply buying, let's say, an expensive property. If you want residency, they'll mainly look at your age. So the younger you are, the obviously the better. I think 30 to 34 is the best age range. They'll look at your Korean language proficiency and your professional experience as well. So really, you're not going to buy for residency either. So anyway, let me know your thoughts. I'm afraid as much as I actually admire South Korea, uh, I think it's a, a fantastic country and I do love the work ethic of the people. I really don't think this is a place you should be putting money in the real estate. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. Um, if this video has been of any use, please do click the like button. If you like my channel, please do subscribe and I'll see you very soon. Bye for today.